Hello everyone, Argzy here. Welcome back to Argzy Farms on the Oaks multiplayer server. We are heading on down to our fields today. Everything is all planted and growing beautifully and I'm going to go and show you the uh, somewhat okay job I did with the tram lines last time with my first time using Proceed. They've come out reasonably well, a few learnings and probably a few missed opportunities in terms of crop but you'll get to see that in just a minute. We're here in the Massey 5 series. We have our weeder on the back because of both the canola fields some weeds in them that we need to go and get dealt with now first things first we're going to go past our entrance we're going to head down and get the uh, narrow tires put on this if you remember last time we did the weeding we did get the narrow tires all set up and ready to go so we can go through the workshop out the back here and get that all configured so we'll sort that out we'll head on down to the field and uh, i'll show you those tram lines because i am quietly impressed with them for a very first time so see you down there all right so we're down here in the small field we got plowed up canola planted with the narrows there on the tractor let's just have a look here and see these uh tram lines that i've managed to put in the field now we had a few little issues here on the headlands with a couple of spots where as i went across the row it turned on and off the rows but you can see there got a nice little row across there come across our headlands all looking very nice suits our 42 meter or 40 meter wide spreader 42 meter wide spreader was but just these couple of sections here where it turned on uh, when I didn't want it to got that there's our next row so that from center to center is 42 meters and then our third row here which is our headland pass which is also 42 meters or center of 42 meters taken from the edge of the field now I'm not sure what exactly happened but somewhere down here a little bit further along we must have moved across a row when we were running along this headland manually and it turned on our tram lines so you can just see suddenly come on at a point here and uh, carry on along the edge so not ideal it does mean we've missed a little bit of opportunity there with crops but uh that'll be fine um, i'm quite happy with how it works out i think in this field next time i'd probably change the spreader width down to 30 meters and maybe work on that or uh, possibly 36 just to see if that works out better because these two rows ended up quite close but it'll work and there you go you can see a few weeds in here have popped up we'll uh, jump up in the drone and get back over to the tractor Go and have a look at the other field as well because i think from the air they look really good but i'm pretty impressed with how these have turned out we'll also be able to take a look at the drone at the wheat field next to us as well uh, obviously it's had a couple more stages of growth on it since we last looked at it which should be starting to fluff up quite nicely we are going to try and get some fertilizer put on that today uh, the main task so we haven't even talked about that get this field weeded get the other canola field weeded and then fertilizer put on all four fields down here so our three fields plus this shared one here with maize but here you go, growing very nicely. So let's grab the drone out, jump up and have a quick look at these fields, and then we'll get into some weeding. So you see it from above those tram lines. While they look good in the field, they're not quite right. Come across here, that wheat field, uh, they're looking very good. Very, very well worked out, and uh, that's going to work out nicely. I'm looking forward to jumping in there with the fertilizer spreader, running at that, uh, I think these were set to 36 or 30 meter width, so I'd have to double check that with days. But looking forward to trying that out. And uh, of course, there you go, you can start to see our field here popping up in the distance with the tram lines on it. So again, this one has worked out pretty well as well. A couple of, again of those little strips where it turned on when I didn't want it to, but in most instances, it's worked out pretty much perfectly. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I know a few people question it and say, well, you know, didn't you have the right tyres on or anything like this? In the UK, this is a very, very common sight to see tram lines and that through your fields as the tractors run through it and uh, working on your widths and matching your planter widths, your spreader widths, your harvester widths and that is becoming more of a common thing as you get into looking after the soil condition underneath uh, so yeah it'll be interesting to see if we can explore that just a little bit further but anyhow there you go that's our fields grass field there as well there's no tram lines in that but we do need to get in and give that some fertilizer as well so get back over to the tractor and we will make a start all right first things first get the uh weedy here all unfolded this has actually done a few hours lately dazed had use of it for uh, a field for a contract 
wedding contract. So we'll get that lowered down. Of course we don't need it lowered on or anything like that. We're certainly not planting a crop. Let's get on through here and see how it's all working. Let's just jump out. Let's double check that we've got rid of those weeds. I'm just a little bit worried they might be too big. And we're going to have to spray. Weeds partial. Actually needing a hoe. Hmm. This could be a little bit of a dilemma. I thought we were into it early enough that we've only had one growth stage on this and we'd be able to get rid of them with a weeder, but... Weeds medium and requiring a hoe. Well, that puts paid to that. We're not even going to be able to do this. We are going to have to lease someone's sprayer and get in here with some herbicide. Oh, that's a bit of a pain. I honestly thought these were going to come out with a weeder. Well, I guess it's back to the yard. We will go and grab our fertilizer spreader and come down and get some fertilizer applied with that. And then we'll make some plans on how we're going to deal with these weeds. To say that's mildly frustrating would be an understatement. So we've just come around here and got our spreader full. We figured we might as well make use here of the 5S and we've gone and got the row crop tires put on it with the spreading. Of course not entirely necessary if we were to follow our tram lines perfectly but just making sure that there's enough weight in the front of this tractor to deal with having this spreader on the back. It's a little bit bouncy. I'm going to decide whether perhaps we might be better off swapping over to the 7 series. I think, yep, there is the example. It's popping around that corner. We don't want to be running this down the road with the risk of us popping a wheelie and losing control in front of some traffic. So we will swap over. We will go and grab the other tractor out. It's just in there and we will run this on down to the field. Alright, take two heading out here off from the farm and uh, let's get on down to the fields and see if we can get the work done. Still mildly frustrated by the fact that our weeder wouldn't pull those weeds out and that we we're going to have to apply some herbicide onto that. Not quite what I had expected. Uh, we might have to give days to yell. I think he's got a sprayer. We might be able to borrow off him. Maybe uh, we haven't charged him for the weeder or anything yet, so maybe we could have a reciprocal deal there on that. But let's head on down. Um, I've just been doing some thinking. I think these tyres probably are a little bit wide while the whole concept of the tram lines is that you can run down them. Uh, I think I don't want to do any more damage to the crop than we need to, so we're going to go and put some narrow tyres on this tractor as well, and then we'll head on down and start doing some spreading. Alright, take two down here at the field. Now, we obviously want to be as careful as we can following these tram lines, but let's just get this spreader here turned on. Head on into the field now. It is set to automatic application. There we go. Uh, getting some um, fertiliser coming out. Now, technically, I was able to set the same GPS course that we used last time. It should all just work without any hassles. But zoom back out as far as we can. In fact, let's just stop there for a second going to consult the precision farming page and we should see we're spreading right to the edge of the field. Not quite the best example because the data is getting a little bit outdated. It's a very dark area on here. We might have to get this field resampled again at the end of this season but you can see we have got that section there uh, which when we're applying automatically is boosting that nitrogen up to 20 kilograms a hectare. This be all that the canola needs which is good to know. So with that in mind we can just carry on 200 kilograms hectare there is the application break canola so I only trust that everything is going on at the rate it should so let's carry on get this field spread move on down to the grass field and into the other canola field as well Well, there we go that field has not taken us very long at all there is only the three passes so we are there and done already let's carry on down we will come back and do the wheat field but i need to make a few little adjustments there obviously change the spread width from 42 meters down to i think it was 30 i'm pretty sure we did every five passes which is a six meter cedar will give us a 30 meter wide width so we're going to carry on down here we've got our grass field to do and as well as our other canola field so We'll just keep going, keep the time lapse running, and see you probably when we've done both of these ones.
Well, there we go. That has not taken us too long to get done at all. And uh, I've got to admit, the tram lines actually make it quite easy and quite fun to run it down there rather than relying on GPS and that sort of thing. I'm pretty confident everything worked out well. That I've covered the right width and I've been able to do it without that GPS. Now, if I was smart, I could have set the GPS up and saved it for the field and then we would have been able to use that GPS path when we got in here. But uh, we didn't do that, so we don't have that choice. Let us go back. Now, I know I said I'm going to get the wheat done. Part of the agreement we had with Dazed was the two-thirds, one-third value of the field. I actually paid slightly more. He had a limited amount of actual cash that he could put in, so my two-thirds was just a little bit more than his. Uh, part of the deal for that to equal it out was he was going to pay for the commodities, the seed, the fertilizer, uh, those kind of things. So um, that's why I'm going to head back to the yard now and top our spreader up just so I can keep a track of exactly how much fertilizer we've put on the field. I know Dave's just got the fertilizer for it down at his shed, so I've got the spreader and everything set up, but I figured seeing I've got this all connected and everything, I can reduce the spread width down to the 30 meters that we had for that field and we can get in there. Oh. Little lag there, we can get in there and uh, just start spreading it and then however much fertilizer we use from this load we'll know we need to get reimbursed for so I think that's probably going to be easier than going down and raiding these supplies so we'll head back to our yard we'll go and get topped up and uh, that'll give us a good benchmark on a starting point for how much fertiliser we use alright we've made it down here to the wheat field I've just finished changing the gearing around on the spreader so we should only be spreading, spreading at 30 metres wide now about here nitrogen is bad 20 used to be 200 kilograms a hectare so we'll probably be putting oh, we will be putting 180 kilograms a hectare on particularly for this spot interesting to see how much that's going to push up our expected yield 92 from potential of 125 so hopefully we get that up and a lot closer to what is required but i'm going to get driven out here park up just double check our spreader width is correct that we do get all the way to the field edge with that 30 meters and if that is all good to go then we will crack into getting this one done as well beauty in this one i will actually go through as well we'll just jump up on the tractor here and set up the gps course pretty sure that we've saved well i'm not quite sure we just tried to load the gps course but it doesn't appear to be there which is a bit unfortunate but anyhow don't quite have an easy path in there let's get this turned on drive straight in here and get onto this headland lap and we'll double check our spreader width now that's looking to me be pretty much perfect out there onto the edge we will look at our precision farming data just double check and make sure it is getting all the way out there you can see there we are getting all the way to the edge. Uh, just what I'm curious about though, is we're not actually putting that much on. We're actually only getting it up to 40 kilograms a hectare. Now, I'm not sure whether that is the optimum rate. We're looking there and saying current's 20, target rate is 220, uh, and we're putting much in level to optional, optimal value for wheat on loam. I'm not sure if that's quite doing it properly. Just seeing if we drive along there, it says our target rate is 180 kilograms a hectare, but it's actually only putting on. There we go, that might be a little bit better. Seems to be putting it on a lot heavier now. Maybe it was just as we came in through the first part of the field. I wasn't quite detecting it properly. Let's just pause again because that is going down a lot faster than it was before. And there we go, that looks a whole lot better than it did before. It's come out green, whereas previously we were only getting that orange. So I'm going to have to go over and check that we did get the right rate put on to those two fields over there. I'd be worried something wasn't working correctly with our automatic application but here we go we are going to carry on moving here on this field doesn't mean we're probably going to go through a little bit more fertilizer than i thought we might but that's not to worry we're near enough to the yard we can go back and get it so let's carry on move on and get this field done as well
there we go that's the field done and we have 44 percent left in the spreader so we've used 6356 liters of fertilizer that's worked out pretty well I know that it's pretty much exactly two full spreaders for some reason the gps wasn't working the gps course we used for seeding wasn't there anymore uh, i did manage to set up another little gps course though which helped keep me on the straight and narrow keep us running down the tram lines now i am just going to dart into this field here on our right just to do a little bit of a test because i wanted to have a look at what the value i wanted to detect for canola and as you can see there it's saying we should be getting up to 220 kilograms a hectare for canola but we have not done that we just drive in here and turn that on and see that is going down a lot faster and i dare say now that it's run out we have another look at our map it's going to be green and there you go we've got a green section down in there so that is incredibly frustrating on top of not being able to weed our fields we are going to have to go back and spread them all again for whatever reason that just hasn't worked so fortunately it hasn't taken us too long fortunately they're not too big of fields and uh, fortunately we don't have too much else to do on the farm at the moment so let's head on back down to the yard i'm going to get this topped up again come down and give those two fields another spread of fertilizer and uh, we'll have a look at the grass field too where that the same thing happened there obviously something to do with the automatic application rate even though it was on it's like it wasn't actually applying automatically i had to turn it off to turn it back on to get that rate going correctly so anyhow we will uh, make sure we don't make that same mistake twice the other thing i will need to do is change the gearing back on the spreader to make sure we're spreading it at 42 meter width that our tram lines are set up or uh, obviously in future i think when we're working in a field combined with someone else we should make sure we keep our tram lines consistent because that will save us the hassle of potentially spreading a field with either too much or too little fertilizer anyhow let's carry on let's go back down and get those fields done one more time We'll take two, deja vu, whatever you like to do it, we are back and we are getting our fertilizer spread here. Again in the fields, looks like a much better scenario, the fertilizer is going down incredibly fast and in fact, if we bring the mini map up, this would have shown us if we'd had this up in the first place, but for whatever reason I chose not to. There it is though, you can see that pure green stripe of perfect yield or perfect nitrogen will hopefully lead to a good yield. Anyhow, I'm not going to bore you with going through this all over again. I'm just going to get my head down, get it done, and we'll see you when we're finished. And once we've figured out what we're going to do with these weeds, I'll have to uh, make a few phone calls and make some arrangements while we're running around these couple of fields to see what we can do. So the grass field here, we've done the first canola field. The grass field is perfect. Just come in here and checked it. It doesn't need any more. So it was just the two canola fields, and obviously the wheat field, it didn't do it on. So... Whether we got lucky that it was putting on the, the right rate here, in fact, it must have to be a 5 kilograms a hectare over what the target rate was, 70, 65. So maybe we were just fortunate that the application rate it was set to was the correct application rate for what we needed here in the grass. But if this is a job, it means we didn't have to go and do the second of the canola fields. I'm going to chew through a bit more fertilizer, which I've gone to fill up, but we're here, we might as well get this 20% thrown on one of the headlands and get this field finished off so like i said we'll carry on we'll see you when we're done i've got to admit that is looking a whole lot better now perfect nitrogen in here 200 of 200 kilograms a hectare and expected yield is up at 115 potential 125 i think it's the weeds that's holding it back when we get into a patch here like there is no weeds back a little bit i think we got to much closer 115 of 125 there we go 122 of 125 and it's showing us no weeds the only thing we're missing out on that two and a half or so percent for the rolling so once we get in here and get these weeds dealt to then we should be looking pretty good to have a decent yield here out of the crop so let's get on back to the yard we'll get things packed away uh i need to get in touch with dazed about using that sprayer he hasn't shown up on the server or anything while we've been on here so might just have to sit tight and wait and see whether we can get that borrowed and get in here and get those done well as if by a complete stroke of luck as we got back to the yard dazed has logged in to the server so we're going to head on over to his yard and pick up his sprayer he is okay with us using that now we're going to figure out we might do a little bit of a trade the value of the fertilizer we put on to the wheat field uh, and see how that aligns with the value of the amount of herbicide we use dazed has got some so we're not going to have to go and buy any just to see how much we use and what the difference is between uh, the two values so we're going to head down here head down to williamson farms and go and pick up the sprayer i'm hoping our little five series has got enough grunt and horsepower to pull it 
one thing that's probably not going to work in our favour here is our tramline widths and again this is the reason why 30 meter tramlines would have been better to do than 42 but fortunately we've got the narrow tyres on here so we are seeing about maybe running down the crop a little bit just to get the weeds sprayed but we'll see what happens well I'm not sure about the uh, size there the 5 years looks pretty tiny in front of that Cavernland sprayer that is a very large sprayer uh, interesting to see that the tyres on the sprayer are probably bigger than the tractor but let's see how it goes hopefully it will pull it okay uh, Dazed is just in there in his shed getting the last of the herbicide he has out from uh, last season so we'll be able to use that hopefully hopefully get us through to the end of the uh, field we do only have the spot spraying on I'm not sure with, actually whether this has the spot spray technology on it or not that'll be interesting to see whether we can make use of that or not can't recall if this one does we'll figure that out when we get down to the farm but uh yeah like I said it's a pretty big sprayer to be pulled behind this little tractor but hopefully we'll be getting by just fine we'll get topped up get some herbicide into it and we will get on the road and get spraying there we are that's us full just on 4,000 litres of herbicide well not full but we've used up the two types of herbicide that Dazed obviously had so uh thank you my friend we will get on our way and go and see how far this goes for our field. Let's get things unfolded here on the sprayer. 32 meters is the width here, so unfortunately, it's not going to align very well with our tram lines. We're just, just going to be off, but we'll make do with what we've got. Obviously, we weren't planning on having to get in here and spray, but this, I guess, something we'll just have to bear in mind if we come through again in the future when we're doing those tram lines. Like I said, we're much better off by keeping them a little bit narrower so if we do have to borrow someone else's equipment like we are today then we'll be able to do it that way uh, but for today we're just going to have to do it this way and get it done so we'll crack into it get both these fields sprayed and the weeds killed as you can see there and uh, we'll see when we're finished <laughs> go that is our spraying all finished finally we used what just under two and a half thousand liters so not too much to get through those fields it was a little bit of a shame that we couldn't just uh, rely on our tram lines for it the widths didn't work out but lesson learned and we'll make sure we are better for next time but uh, let's get this back on down to days we'll figure out the uh, ins and outs with the costs but I think we'll probably end up pretty much cost neutral between us using this I'm using the weeder and uh be supplying the fertilizer onto the wheat and he supplied the herbicide for us so uh, yeah I reckon we'll be pretty much equal but good timing pleased to be able to have got that done um, considering the start of the uh, episode and start of the time here on the server I thought we were going to get caught short and not be able to get those weeds done bearing in mind we've actually only got one more day in this month I'm uh, a little bit late getting our work done in May but that's all right it's done now and that is the key thing so and get these all taken back and uh, get back down to our yard all right there we go sprayer dropped off and we'll head on back over to our yard but there we go that is us done here in argsy farms for another week or another month's work 
yeah, and the oaks will just uh, top the Massey up. Some diesel is getting a little bit low, I noticed, so I don't want to have that same dilemma we had last time where we ran the big tractor out of death. So uh, we're all topped up, all good to go for the future. I probably need to think about getting these wheels switched back out, but for now, they are all good. Uh, as for next month, well, we might have some grass to mow, but I think it's going to have one more growth stage on to it. So there's really going to be very little for us to do. We'll see. There may be an episode. There might not. Otherwise, you might see us again in July. Uh, I've got a few plans for some passive type income and some other things to do. Obviously, we've got the animals we need to keep on top of and keep them all looked after as well. So uh, we'll see what happens. We may be here. We may not. But uh, for this one, that is all I have for today. As always, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the episode and I'll catch you in the next one.